Hi guys, it's your Island Girl and I'm back with another reaction video for you today. And today we are reacting to 10 biggest lies about Islam. Now this one was requested, so I'm your Island Girl gonna get it done. As you know, I always say go in the comment section, tell me what you'd like me to react to next and it will be done. You just have to give your girl some time. So this one is found on FTD Facts. So let's get into this one because I have no clue about this at all. So I'm eager and excited to find out what this is all about. So if you're new to my channel, it's your first time here, come on in, wrap back, put a smile on your face and enjoy this reaction with your island girl. To all my regulars, my stragglers, my day one, my thank you for always being here and relaxing with your girl. Don't forget to do what? Wrap back. Keep that smile on your face and enjoy this video. Let's get into this video. Here we go. First lie is Muslims worship a moon god. So some non-Muslims mistakenly believe that Allah is an Arab god or a moon god or some type of idol. However, Allah is in the Arabic language a proper name for God. And Arabic speaking Christians also use the name Allah for God. Now one of the main factors of this belief is because one of the first uses of the crescent moon came from the second century BC where it represented the ancient Mesopotamian moon god Nana. And now today the crescent moon is associated with Islam. So many non-Muslims say, well, look, you worship the moon god. There's even a moon in the symbol of your religion. Next up at number nine, most Muslims are Arabs. Okay, so Islam is often associated with Arab people. But did you know that Arabs make up only 15% of all Muslims? The country with the largest Muslim population is actually Indonesia. And large numbers of Muslims are... Sorry to pause. I didn't know that the Arabs only make up 15%. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? It's actually Indonesia, and large numbers of Muslims are also found in Asia, Africa, Europe, as well as other parts of the world. Muslims are encouraged to learn Arabic because they believe that the only language that you can really get the full extent of the Quran is in Arabic. Oh. Islam oppresses women. Practices like forced marriage, spousal abuse are actually things that contradict Islamic law and most of the bad treatment towards women actually come from people's own evil natures and their own cultures and their belief and it's completely separate from the faith of Islam itself. Muslims are extremists. Now okay, I, I, I gotta be honest. That right there, number eight that he talk about the practices and marriage and forced marriages and, and all of that. Um, I've heard that before, so I'm glad that that's not the case. I'm telling you, there's so many things that people can tell you, and you get so mis so many misconception of, of it, that you know about somebody's culture or their way of life. It's not even funny, so I'm glad this is being cleared up. Let's go into extremists. Now, this is a big one. Many Muslim leaders and scholars frequently speak out against all forms of extremism, and they offer different explanations and interpretations of Muslim teachings that have been twisted by others to promote extremism. Muslims believe the entire Quran, taken as a complete text, gives a message of hope as well as peace and faith and good and virtues, love. and oh. any form of extremism cannot be justified under proper interpretation of the Islamic okay. faith. Oh boy, Islam is intolerant of other faiths. <laughs> Muslims are constantly reminded that they are not the only ones who worship God. Specifically, Jews and Christians are called the people of the book in the Quran, meaning that those are people who also received previous revelations from God and are also can be seen as true worshipers of God. Also in Surah 2 verses 256 in the Quran, it says, there is no compulsion in religion. And and this is interpreted to mean that you cannot force anyone to become a Muslim. You still got to respect other people's beliefs. True. You have to respect each other's beliefs. Wow, this this is interesting. Let let me let halfway me in at number five. In. Jihad means holy war. So jihad in Arabic does not mean holy war. It actually means to strive or to struggle or to persevere. And oh. jihad can be something that's done personally or can also involve a community. So in effect, jihad really means to become closer to God. And this type of struggle, jihad, is to ensure that a peaceful and equitable community still continues to exist. Of course, self-defense is acceptable to protect yourself 
yourself and your community from any sort of like dangers. However, any form of offensive aggression is prohibited in Islam. All right, number Beautiful. four, Islamic prayer doesn't really have any meaning. Most people now know that Muslims are to pray five, five times, times a day. A now in Islam, there are several benefits to prayer. The daily prayers help keep Muslims minds on God and it helps Muslims to remember the Quran because they recite passages of the Quran as well as it's a time to go before God to express thanks to ask for forgiveness to look for guidance in your life so there's a whole lot of meaning for Muslims when it comes to prayer now I understand why they pray at least five times a day that makes sense the way he just explained it that makes total sense. All right, number three, Jesus is completely irrelevant in Islam. That's actually not true. Jesus, however, is revered as a prophet and the Messiah in oh. Islam. The Islamic faith believes that Jesus will return as a Messiah and defeat the Antichrist. This view is also very similar to the Christian view. The only difference is that Muslims yeah. don't view Jesus as the son of God. He's just seen as a prophet when you compare it to the Christian faith. All right, guys, we got two. Okay, number three, um, interesting. So he's not seen as the son of God. He's only seen as a prophet. So, but okay, I get it. More left. So the crescent moon is a universal symbol of Islam. It's actually, okay. yeah, it's not. Okay, so the early Muslim community oh. did not really have any sort of symbols or anything. Now the crescent moon, as well as the star symbol, they actually predate Islam by several thousands of years. And as a matter of fact, they weren't affiliated with Islam at all until the Ottoman Empire placed it on their flag. And over time, the symbol became more associated with Islam. But it's not actually their okay. official symbol. That just doesn't exist. And the Ooh. number one biggest lie, oh, myth, misconception about Islam is that Muhammad is the founder of Islam and Muslims worship him. Muslims believe that Muhammad was God's final prophet and communicated God's final revelation to humanity. Muslims consider Adam, the first man created, to actually be the first Muslim because he was, of course, surrendered to the will of God, and that's what the term Muslim means, oh. one who surrenders to the will of God. Muhammad is held in great esteem, but he's not to be worshipped because worship is only meant to be directed towards God, and it's completely forbidden to worship anyone or anything else. Muslims may, however, celebrate Muhammad's birthday, similar to the way that Americans celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Alright guys, so that's all I have for you in this episode. This was your brief look at 10 minutes interesting number one is very interesting because like i said i don't know anything about it but i've um funny he said that because a lot of people they've always talked about muhammad 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 so you think that people worship him and he's the son of god and the whole nine yards so i was i enjoy that clarity to be honest with you wow I'm learning something new, which is amazing. Um, wow, that, that's all I'm, uh, I'm going to really say about this. Wow, that was very enlightening. That was, was, that just put a light bulb in my head. Because a lot of things are similar to the Christian faith, which is just, that's why they send 10 biggest lies. I get it. Now I get it. There are a lot of misconceptions are out there. A lot. So, don't forget to go into the comment section and tell me what you like me to react to next. It's your island girl and I'm skedaddling out of here. You know what, guys? Thank you for this request. I really appreciate it. It's never too, too late or you're never too old to learn and know something and know about something new. That's, that's how I see it. Thank you for watching, love you guys, and I'll catch you guys in another video.